In this video, I want to address the sense of loss that some, of, some people may feel when they realize they will not live forever, that they will one day die and cease to exist, the sense of unfairness that they might feel, and perhaps even the way they might feel drawn towards religious belief systems that promise an eternal existence after death. And why, first of all, these belief systems are selling snake oil, no matter how you look at it, and why also there's nothing desirable about an eternal existence. And before I launch into that, what I would like you to do is cast your mind back to when you were, say, for example, 5 or 10 years old or 15 years old any of these important dates in your past. Certainly, I don't think anybody can claim that they are that person that they were when they were 5 years old, 10 years old or 15 years old. Of course, the person that existed at the time has persisted, has grown, matured into what you are today. And it makes sense to refer to that person as me. That was me when I was five years old. But on another level, you could equally validly argue that that boy of five years old no longer exists. Yes, he survived and he grew and matured into me and I possess some memories of what it was like to be a five-year-old boy. But it wasn't me. It was a different person at the time. At some stage during the intervening 40 years, something happened, things happened, things grew, changed, evolved, and now here I am making this video. And all I can say about the five-year-old boy that grew into me is that there is a continuation, a continuous line of experiences that links me to him. But he's not me. And if you think about that, you start realizing what the problems might be with any promises or any hopes you might harbor for eternal existence. How would you imagine that would be like, what would that be like, do you think, to exist forever? You have an, a limited capacity, even though our brains are extremely complex and can store and deal with mind-boggling amounts of information, you still have a limited, finite capacity for remembering things, storing things, and memories aren't even that reliable, as many studies have proven. So, one way of living eternally is to accumulate more and more knowledge, information, memories, and so on and so forth, until you hit that limit. And then what? One option that's open to you is the Homer Simpson option. You know what I mean. One new thing goes out and one old thing falls out. How long does that go on until nothing that's left of that person that is you projected thousands, millions, billions, trillions of years into the future? Nothing in that person there so far away into the future bears any relation to what you are now. So you didn't actually survive, did you? You didn't actually live forever. There's just a continuous existence between you now and that person so far into the future. The other option, of course, is for some god at some religious belief systems might want you to believe, 
to grant you an ever-increasing capacity to store knowledge, information and so on. But even then, as your knowledge increases and increases and increases and increases over the trillions and trillions and trillions of years that an eternity will last, what constitutes you right now becomes an ever more infinitesimal part of what you are then. Until, of course, still, even though the core of what you are today is still present in what you have become then, you will be so infinitesimal that, again, you are, you, what you are today becomes irrelevant to what you have become then. And, of course, the final option is that you grow until you reach your capacity for what you can deal with, what you can remember, and then simply nothing new goes in. And you will continue to exist for trillions and trillions of years, and you'll be like that man that I saw on the television one day. He was a famous musician, and one day something happened to his mind, and now he has no short-term memory left. In other words, he forgets what he did 10 seconds ago. He can't remember one minute to the next what he was doing, what he was at, who he was talking to, what he was thinking himself even. And I saw his diary and it was depressing. He filled his diary with line after line after line saying, now I am really awake, now I am really present here. And then the next line, he obviously wrote, read the previous line, had no recollection of re reading it, writing it. Couldn't imagine himself being fully conscious and fully present when he wrote that line. And again he said, no, now I really am present, now I really am in the moment, now I really exist. He still had his memories of the time leading up to whenever this thing happened in his brain. But he's living in a sort of limbo. And that would, that's what that would be like for you as well. Because there's no capacity for your brain to store any more information. Any form of eternity that you can imagine has these kinds of problems. And you will realize that whatever you are today, you cannot survive an eternity into the future. What you are today will one day be lost. No matter how long you live, no matter what advances, what promises are made to you, you simply cannot exist forever. You cannot exist forever. And that's why anybody who makes promises to you of eternal life is basically lying. And any promises of eternal life that are made to you are snake oil, are undesirable, not something you should aspire to, I don't think anyway. And in any case, look at what religions who do claim to have eternal life on offer are actually offering you. There are exclusive clubs of eternal life available to you according to them and there you are as long as you believe the right things have the correct faith do the correct rituals and so on and so forth you could enjoy this eternal life but if your loved ones don't follow suit if they don't do the same things as yourself then they are doomed and how could you possibly enjoy an eternity knowing that the people that you've loved didn't make it, couldn't make it, are perhaps even suffering eternally while you are supposedly enjoying yourself eternally? Again, any suggestion that has ever been put forward by any religious person on how this could be resolved involves some mind-altering 
effect where you either don't care anymore or you don't remember those people who didn't accept the God that you're supposed to accept and so on and so forth. No matter how you look at it, it means you, what you are today, will be destroyed. And that's the only way there can be a continuation from what you are now to what you will become an infinite amount of time into the future. Eternal life is a figment of the imagination. It's a pipe dream and it's a waste of energy believing in it.